Hey guys, how you doing? My name is Steph. Some people call me Uncle Steph. In this video, I'm going to tell you, we'll give you a short version of one of the key events in my life that led me into coding and development, and why it did, and why I chose to pursue coding and development as I did. Uh, this will be the, the short version of the story. If enough people like it, comment below. I'll give you some of the long versions. There are a few events in my life that had a major impact in terms of my perceptions of reality, even, even that, that profound. So let's just jump into it. So uh, I was 18 years old, maybe 19. I, yeah, it's been a long time. And I get, I get a blood disease. It's a blood disease when I was hospitalized. I almost died, so I'm told. And uh, they weren't sure if I was going to live through the night the day I was hospitalized. So I was brought in, hospitalized, they're pumping me up full of drugs and stuff. And in the, uh, f the week that I was there, I believe it was a week, they told me they spent uh, in the first two, three days about $100,000 worth of uh, drugs on me to keep me alive. So thank God for that. You know? So that was an interesting story. So that wasn't the end of it. That was just the beginning of this whole illness. And it went on for a year and a half where eventually... I was able to uh, pretty much cure myself of it uh, with the help of Western medicine supporting me. But actually what cured me was, uh, believe it or not, traditional Chinese medicine, lifestyle changes, diet changes, etc. I won't get into it here. But the point is, I had this near-death experience and I was in a bad situation in the hospital twice a week for about a year, year and a half, give or take a few months. And so this had a profound impact in terms of my perception of reality. When I got sick, I was training very, very hard because I was considering becoming a pro fighter of some sort. And uh, I also was going to university. Uh, my major was uh, psychology. And believe it or not, I even had a small little import business at the time. So I was burning uh, the candle at both ends. That's probably why my body collapsed. Anyway. So, um, I almost died, I'm on heavy medications, and I'm not doing well, and so my GPA starts dropping in university, so I said, you know what, I can't do everything, I can always come back to school. So I paused, I drop out of university, and so I still have my business, it was starting to develop, so I said, you know what, I'm just going to keep working on this, because you only live life once, I can always go back to university. So I started building up the business and started, you know, slowly but surely. I had no financing, no money. It was just my partner and I, we started with $200. And we turned 200 into four, then four into eight, and eight into 1,600, and so forth. Uh, after a period of time, uh, I sold out of that uh, for reasons I won't get into now. But I sold out of that, and so here I am, in a, I'm kind of in limbo, and I'm trying to decide what to do. But fortunately... In 94, uh, while I was still had that first business, I learned how to build websites for my business. This is very early on. And uh, so I, put, I had one of the first websites in the world. I had one of the first websites with photos on it. Back in those days, if you could put up a nice-looking photo of a fish uh, that was colorful, uh, you were a web design god. Anyhow, I got my first gig at that time, still having my other business. I took it for fun. I got my first job as a developer, well, web designer, for a legal firm. And uh, they actually were a pretty established firm with contacts all over the world. They offered to hook me up with all these legal firms start building websites. I didn't take it because I had my current business going. And it was growing and it was going. And that was a mistake. And I tell you why it was a mistake. Now, hindsight is always twenty twenty, But I didn't understand a basic concept. So here's the first lesson. Look for a market that's growing, a market that is, still has growth. You, you're much better off typically in that market than being inside of a market that is old, established, or maybe sinking. Ironically, the business I was in at the time uh, was very old and established, and due to tech, due to the rise of home computers and so forth, it started to sink and crash. Just a few years after I sold out, the, the, the business got decimated. And I had predicted that. That's one of the reasons why I sold out. So I sold out, and... I was kind of in limbo, I had only done one gig as a freelancer. I said, okay, I'll start going after other freelance gigs. That took time, that took time. Any time you start a new business, there's always this 
lag time, this startup period that business is not going to be easy necessarily. So I still pursued this, even though it was difficult. I was starving the first year. My cash had been locked up in the business. There was a legal dispute. So I was starving the first year. And then uh, eventually I started getting contracts here and there. First contracts were bad contracts, as typical. But eventually as I, get more, I got more experience, I was able to get better contracts, better and better contracts. And I refused a couple opportunities for jobs. I was offered jobs as a, they call them webmaster at the time. Um, and they were good, well-paying jobs. It would be equivalent today of 100K salary jobs for entry level when you're in your early 20s. That's kind of good. But I refused them because I didn't like the idea of working for somebody else. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong or bad to work for somebody else. It's, I know a lot of people do quite well with that. But it was, just wasn't my personality type. And what the blood disease taught me in that whole experience of almost dying in a year, year and a half of um, dealing with it taught me you only live life once, you better do what you like because who knows what's going to happen. At that point in time, I'm in my early 20s, I thought, you know, I could be dead in my 30s, right? This could come back again in my 30s. So I said, or, or any time. So I said, I'm also just do what I want. So I did what I want. And uh, so when you do what you want, your work becomes your hobby if you uh, plan out things properly. So work for me since, well, since my entire life, really, has been born out of my hobbies. My first business had nothing to do with tech. It was born out of my hobby. And so that near-death experience, that ongoing serious illness, taught me to... Uh, experience life the way you want because in the end we're all dead and so nothing sadder than leading a life of uh, quiet desperation I don't know where I got that from better to tough it out especially if you're younger and figure out what you're good at what you like and explore that now I assume a lot of you are watching this because you're into code or you're an aspiring coder or you are a coder Within the context of coding, you have to figure out the type of development that you would like to do. There's many different types of development, as you know. There's web design, and even in web design, there's full stack, there's front end, there's back end. There's all of these different languages, PHP, Python, Java, C Sharp. There's all of these different frameworks, React, Vue. Um, then you can jump outside of the web, you can get into Swift development for iOS, you can get into Java development, C Sharp, you can get into AI. It goes on and on. I could go on for 25 minutes about that. The point is, is not all programming is the same. So if you're writing um, code in C for small devices, it's a very different type of development than if you're writing client apps for, in Swift or you're writing web apps. So I encourage you, once you've learned your fundamentals, the fundamentals include the basics of development, but a lot of other things as well. Once you've got the fundamentals, that will give you the discerning eye to be able to determine what specialization of programming you want to get into, like Swift programming for iOS, like maybe Swift programming for the new Apple Vision. Who knows? We'll see how that goes. Maybe you just want to do full stack development with Django. Maybe you want to do it with uh, Node and Express. Who knows? So explore the different venues. Explore, explore the different uh, specializations, as a, uh, rather. And then fuel out the market. You also have to be responsive to market. You may want to uh, you know, play, the, play the spoons for a living, but if nobody's going to pay you, you've got to move on beyond that. So, yeah, that's the lesson. That's the one particular lesson. There's much more, by, by the way, to these stories, but that was the one lesson. You never know when you're going to go. You never know what's going to happen. You might as well enjoy your life. And what I would suggest you do is make your hobbies uh, your business, if you can, or, or do what you enjoy. And you can do that working for somebody as well. Uh, but that's, that's, I think that's the takeaway. I'll leave it there because... There's many other aspects to this. If you like these type of stories where I describe these of some critical events in my life, like the blood disease, this is one, and the lessons that they taught me, now how that formed where I am. I haven't worked for anybody, by the way, since I've been 18 years old. My last job 
was just before uh, I, well, just before I got my blood disease. That's when I had my last job and I was a bouncer in a nightclub. That was the last time I got a paycheck from somebody as, a, as an employee. Every, ever since then, I've been an entrepreneur, solo or with a company or a freelancer. So uh, it's just, it's uh, no regrets in that regard. There are downsides though. <laughs> anyway, I hope you like this. If you do, please comment below. I do have a mentoring program if you want to learn development, entrepreneurship, freelancing, whatnot. And I also have self-paced courses that you can uh, take on your own. You don't necessarily have to jump into my boot camp. All right, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.